Hello everyone. In this class, we'll try to learn about calcium metabolism. So the learning objectives of this class would be to learn the basics of calcium and phosphate metabolism, understand the importance of learning calcium and phosphate metabolism to learn bone physiology, list the functions of calcium and phosphate, appreciate various aspects of bone physiology, outline hormonal regulation of calcium metabolism, list the constituents of the bone, uh, name the cell types of bone and give their function, give brief description of uh, the bone, the mechanism of bone formation and bone resorption, name the factors controlling the bone formation and bone resorption, comprehend the process of balancing the functions of osteoblasts and osteoclasts, and learn the, uh, the physiological basis for osteoporosis and osteopetrosis. The major hormones involved in the regulation of plasma, calcium and phosphorus metabolism are parathyroid hormone secreted from the parathyroid gland, calcitonin secreted from parafollicular cells of thyroid gland and vitamin D. Other hormones like glucocorticoids, growth factors, insulin also influence calcium metabolism. These hormones control calcium metabolism by primarily acting on three structures that is GI tract, kidney and bones. While regulating calcium concentration, many of these factors also influence phosphate level in the plasma. A balance between calcium and phosphate is always maintained in our body and abnormalities in this balance results in severe dysfunctions. Functions of Calcium Genesis and maintenance of action potential, especially in cardiac and smooth muscles. Genesis of pacemaker potential in various pacemaking tissues. Excitation contraction coupling during muscle contraction. Excitability of the nerve and muscle. The help in cell division. The help in bone formation, that is mineralization of the bone. Secretion of endocrine and exocrine glands, that is calcium mediated exocytosis causes the release of hormones and enzymes from the gland. Acts as a neurotransmitter to uh, in the nerve terminals. It is important for blood coagulation. Calcium is the coagulation factor 4 and it is highly essential for clotting of the blood. Many anticoagulants uh, chelate calcium to prevent clotting. Modulation of various enzyme activities. <coughs> if you see the calcium uh, metabolism, the dietary, dietary intake is around 1 gram per day and uh, almost uh, 300 milligrams is absorbed and 150 milligrams is uh, secreted. So fecal excretion is around uh, 850 milligrams per day. And if you see uh, almost 10 grams uh, of uh, calcium is filtered and uh, almost uh, 9850 milligrams per day is reabsorbed back so 150 milligrams of calcium is excreted in the urine so the total excretion is around 1 gram per day and almost 11 grams of calcium is exchanged with uh, extracellular fluid and uh, almost 500 milligrams is deposited and res resolved from the bone Normally, a healthy adult contains about 1.1 1 to 1.5 kgs of calcium in the body. About 99% of the total calcium is present in bones and teeth. The total extracellular pool of calcium is about 1 to 1 1.5 grams and intracellular pool is about 10 to 15 grams. The half the total plasma calcium is ionized and present in the biologically active form. About 10% of the plasma calcium is in the non-ionized form like calcium bicarbonate and about 40% is bound to the albumin. So this is the this is about distribution of the calcium. So total body content is around uh, 1.2 uh, kgs. In bone and teeth is around 99%, uh, 0.9% approximately 11 grams in the intracellular fluid and 0.1% approximately 1 gram 
is in the extracellular fluid. Coming to phosphorus, uh, the functions, the phosphate is present in ATP, creatinine phosphate and various cofactors like NAD, NADP and thiamine pyrophosphate. It is an integral part of the secondary messengers like cells in cyclic AMP and inositol triphosphate. It is also found in DNA and RNA. It is required for phosphorylation of many intracellular proteins for the formation of phosphoproteins. Phosphoproteins mediate many intracellular metabolic activities. Phosphate acts as a covalent and modifier of many enzymes. It is a major constituent of the bone and teeth like that of calcium. It serves as an important component of intracellular pH buffering system. We see the metabolism. Most diet, dietary intake is 1.4 gram per cent. Uh, 1200 milligrams is reabsorbed and uh, 200 milligrams is uh, secreted back so the fecal uh, excretion is around 400 milligrams per day and in the kidney almost 6 gram per day is filtered and uh, uh, 5 grams per day is is going to be reabsorbed so urinary excretion is 1 gram per day so the total ex total amount of phosphorus excreted is around 1.4 grams per day okay and this phosphorus is uh, exchanged with the tissues and uh, and the bone so almost 2 milligrams per day is uh, deposited and resolved from the bone the total body phosphate content is roughly about half the calcium that is uh, out of 600 grams of total phosphate in the body about 86 percent is in the bones and 14 percent is in the intracellular fluid and 0.08 percent in the extracellular fluid about six percent is is in the muscle uh, and 18 and uh, 86 percent is in bone and teeth so so total body content is around 600 grams on an average in bones and teeth is almost around 86 percent and intracellular fluid it is around 14 percent about 84 grams and in extracellular extracellular fluid it is around 0 0.08 percent that is 1.2 grams bone is a, a compact living connective tissue which is well vascularized it plays a vital role in calcium phosphate homeostasis in addition to its other important functions the major functions of bones are as follows they form a skeletal framework of the body which is crucial for changing and maintaining various body postures. By providing stable postural background, bone allows uh, the movements to occur. They play an important role in metabolism of various minerals, especially contribute to calcium and phosphate and magnesium homeostasis. The bone protects important structures uh, and uh, viscera in the thoracic and pelvic cavities and the skull. Bone marrow is the primary site for hemopoiesis. So they produce uh, and supply formed elements of the blood. So this is the composition of the bone. It's mainly made up of inorganic components and the organic components. Inorganic components are made up of uh, calcium, phosphate, carbonate, magnesium, sodium and water. Whereas uh, organic compounds are uh, a type 1 collagen and the ground substances like proteoglycans and high molecular weight substances. So this is the transverse section of and transverse and longitudinal section through the compact bone which is uh, showing the circumferential lamellae, concentrate lamellae and harvational canal system. Uh, uh, with a workman's canal. So this uh, diagram showing the compact bone uh, and uh, the spongy bone. Okay, so so this is the compact bone and this is the spongy bone of the bone. So this uh, diagram showing the structure of the bone where it is showing epiphysis, epiphyseal plate compact bone, marrow cavity, 
and the trivet lip bone. Types of cells in the bone. There are three types of cells in the bone. These are called as osteoblasts, osteoclasts and osteocytes. Osteoblasts and osteocytes are called as osteoprogenitor cells and they develop from primitive cells. Osteoclasts uh, develop from the precursors such as monocytes and tissue macrophages. Okay. So, so A is osteocytes, B is osteoblast and C is osteoclast here. This diagram showing arrangement of the cells uh, in the bone. Note that the canaliculi connects uh, connect between the osteocytes and osteocytes and the osteoblasts. So this is the mechanism by which bone is formed. So initially, the osteoblasts they are going to lie the collagen fibers that will uh, form uh, osteoid tissue where the collagen is embedded with the gelatinous matrix so then the osteoid gets converted osteoid converted into the lamellus lamellus of the bone because of the mineralization then osteoblast move away the line okay so then the second layer of the osteoid is formed Okay, so, we can note the osteocyte representing an osteoblast is imprisoned between the lamellae here. Okay, so, then the, the second layer gets uh, uh, converted into the bone tissue and then there will be production of the third layer of the osteoid tissue. Okay, so, that is how the bone is going to be formed. Bone resorption. So in the first phase, the H plus is secreted from the osteoclast. So there are proton pumps uh, that those are uh, hydrogen dependent ATPases in the endosomes present in the cytosol of the osteoclast. When osteoclasts are activated, proton pumps migrate to the cell surface and are inserted into the osteoclast membrane. Secretion of H plus makes the environment acidic, pH decreases about uh, 4 and the acidic pH dissolves the hydroxy appetite and favors the action uh, of acidic enzymes. In the second phase, the acid protease enzyme secreted by the osteoclast destroys the collagen and organic matrix. The collagen uh, breakdown products have a pyridinone structures. One such important product, product is hydroxyproline. Therefore, Hydroxyprolinuria is an index of bone resorption. Coming to osteoporosis, osteoporosis is decrease in the bone mass and density. All human beings gain uh, bone early in life. The peak of the total bone mass is attained between 25 and 35 years of age. Usually after the age of 40 years, the bone mass gradually decreases. This is called as inversional uh, osteoporosis. In females, the process of bone resorption is facilitated at the time of menopause due to the cessation of estrogen secretion, that is postmenopausal osteoporosis. In fact, the rate of bone remodeling increases with age. However, with increased osteoclastic activity, bone mat matrix is lost and more cavities are formed, which uh, is not uh, refilled. Uh, by the osteoblastic activity. Also, the mineralization decreases, so this causes reduction in the bone density and bone mass. So, this process uh, is known as osteoporosis. The causes of osteoporosis are hyperparathyroidism, hyperthyroidism, Cushing syndrome, ovarian disease, uh, which reduces the estrogen secretion, uh, cigarette smoking, alcoholism. Uh, deficiency of vitamin C, so vitamin C causes collagen uh, C deficient synthesis, so inadequate uh, uh, dietary calcium. Features of osteoporosis uh, are they increase the susceptibility of the bone uh, to fracture, especially in elderly. Osteoporosis is more common in vertebra, hip bones, and distal forearms because of the because these bones are have more trabecular 
components as tubercular bone are metabolically more active so they the calcium is lost rapidly there the treatment here is by administration of calcium and vitamin d tablets in severe cases in females estrogen therapy may be instituted okay. so this is uh, in brief about the metabolism of calcium and phosphorus thank you